The cutting edge most premium virtual reality headsets offer much more realistic and fully immersive experience and sometimes the illusion is so strong that you might even feel like you are actually in there. These most expensive VR headsets offer sophisticated features like motion tracking, high resolution displays and the best quality possible. They are also generally more comfortable, better at blocking outside light and good at controlling motion sickness. On the other hand, the much more cheaper entry-level VR headsets are good enough for consuming 360 degree content but compared to the expensive ones, the experience is still quite decent but it lacks the sense of immersion or illusion. See, both of these are designed for different use cases, like professional gamers tend to go for the PC or console centered VR headsets while beginners might be okay with the entry-level VR headsets as well. And by now, you might have guessed the VR headsets which offer fully immersive experience are the ones which need to be tethered with consoles or computers like the HP Reverb 2, HTC Vive Cosmos or Sony PlayStation VR etc. And although these provide the best possible experience, but they are way too expensive for most people to afford. So we leave it here. And I think as most of you are interested in smartphone VR headsets, so let's get into it. So in this video, from now onwards, I will be comparing the widely available cheapest VR headsets to the expensive VRs which in this case for the reference is the Samsung Gear VR. Yes, I know it's not that expensive, neither it's the latest one, but this would give you an idea about what to expect from an entry level and slightly expensive VR headsets for a smartphone. So this is the Samsung Gear VR which came with Samsung Galaxy Note 5 almost 5 to 6 years ago, but it still has the guts to be compared against the newer entry level VR headsets. So in comparison, the first thing to compare is the level of immersion or illusion which you get from each of these. In the case of cheap VR, there is almost no sense of immersion. Essentially, it's just the glass lenses and the display of your phone without any electronics or software playing its role from the VR end. However, watching videos in it is quite impressive as you get to have a very big screen. And if you play 360 degree videos, it still looks quite good until you move your head around because even with a slight movement, it kind of blurs out the picture. And maybe higher refresh rate displays do a better job at controlling this, but that is something you should be knowing. And you also get to see pixelation, which is more prominent in case of low resolution screens. In my case, the phone I have has a quad HD screen, but still pixels can easily be seen. And that's a common issue for both low end or high end VR headsets. Although some of them do a better job at its reduction. As with every other tech product, the virtual reality headsets also has three main categories. The top-notch VR headsets which need to be connected with consoles or computers give you the full sense of immersion. While the second class is of the virtual reality sets in which best possible experience is provided using smartphones. In that case, the VR headsets take advantage of the onboard electronics and software and use either phone screen or built-in screen to provide the semi-immersive experience to the user. Last but not the least, although the entry-level cheap VR headsets fails at providing the immersive experience but it is still good for basic use. In other words, it's worth its price. These simplest forms of virtual reality headsets are made up of nothing but a pair of plastic magnifying lenses and a sheet of cheap plastic or cardboard in case of Google Cardboard, which uses a standard smartphone as a screen. The problem with these VR headsets is that they offer limited interactivity. That is why these are only best for basic use. Either some of these do have a single or two buttons or in some cases no buttons at all. In any case, to use these cheaper virtual reality sets, you would need to download necessary apps from the Play Store so that it can play the content in VR mode. I would suggest that if you are going to buy one of these VR sets, make sure it has some kind of button or controller to interact with the screen so that you can avoid the frustration of inserting and removing the device when you need to change something. On the other hand, the upper class of these VR headsets has its own app store. It has hundreds if not thousands of supported apps which you can use to enjoy virtual reality. And that's the reason why they cost more than the cheaper ones. It does provide a far better experience than the cheaper ones with an immersive environment in it. You get to see proper controls using which you can interact with the phone in real time. Even it has the ability to play supported games. I am not sure exactly how many games it has the support for, but I think it would be an interesting thing for you to explore and experience. 
you can watch all types of media with it and even can surf the internet as well and as it has its own built-in sensor so the motion sickness is very little and the good thing about the entry level VR sets besides its price is that they can be used with almost every standard smartphone however VR sets like Gear VR can only work with some specific smartphones generally the prices of cheap VRs are mostly in the price range of $20 to $30 while the slightly expensive ones might range from $50 to $200 bucks. and the most high end flagship VRs starts from $500 and can even reach up to $1000. So in the end, I would say that if you want to have the best possible experience then go with the slightly expensive VRs like Samsung Gear VR or the newer version of Google Daydream etc. However, if you just want to try it for fun and for a big screen to watch movies on, then go with the cheaper ones like Google Cardboard, ShineCone VR, VR Box, etc. That's it guys, please do subscribe if you like the video. Thanks for watching and bye.